Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boris with the Mike Boris channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking U joint assemblies and why you actually don't put it in gear in the full up trailer position. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers, here we are at the Craftsman Workstation. And as you can see on the left hand side, resting on a stand is our outdrive, freshly rebuilt every single part, upper and lower. Let's take a closer look. To a closer look, again, everything rebuilt. We even put new stickers on it and painted the propeller. Check that out. Here's the back portion of our Alpha 1 Gen 1 of an 89 glass port Merc Cruiser, 3.0 liter. And again, the purpose of this video, we are going to explain the purpose, the design, and how our U-joint assembly and shaft work. At this point, DIYers, I have repositioned the camera. Again, here is our outdrive, the upper unit, and feeding out of the upper unit is our U-joint assembly. And U-joint assembly is short for universal joint assembly. And from here, you can see the internal crossbars. In addition, the very uniquely and engineered designed inner mount that holds the crossbars. And on the outer portion is our larger yoke shaft. And inside this portion right here is our smaller U-joint. And again, we want to talk about the design and purpose of the U-joint assembly. And bringing it down to basically 101 definition terms, the entire design and purpose of your U-joint assembly is to transfer mechanical power between two shafts when they are at a specific angle from one another or to one another. And really, DIYers, this is kind of engineering at its finest. But unfortunately, you don't get to see this in action when the boat is running and the outdrive is secured to the boat. Everything is internal and sealed. And if sealed correctly and installed correctly, this entire U-joint assembly does not see water, which is a good thing. Water would ultimately corrode it, rust it, and lead it to premature failure, which obviously you don't want. However, continuing on, the assembly really consists of three parts. Two yokes, which we just talked about. You've got the larger yoke that feeds into the bell housing and through the hull of the boat, where this spline portion of the shaft goes into the engine coupler of the inboard engine. And when the engine is running and you put it in gear, whether it's forward or reverse, the engine coupler begins to spin and in return spins this entire shaft and everything downstream through the outdrive and to the propeller. So again, two yokes and the third part of the assembly is your internal crossbars. And when everything is in motion, it allows the input shaft to spin on a vertical axis, while at the same time, the output shaft and splines will rotate at a different angle. And with that said, again, you've got an input shaft and an output shaft. And in our case, the input shaft is the shaft feeding into the upper unit. So let's think about this for a minute. You've got the outdrive secured on the boat. You've got the engine running. You're out on the water and you're in forward gear. And let's just say you're at idle. As you head farther away from the dock, in most cases, the water gets deeper. And what do we do? at that point. Well, we apply downward pressure on our trim lever, which is located on our shift and throttle lever, and we begin lowering the engine deeper into the water. So let's stop right there. Let's back up just a little bit. I'm going to pick up the shaft and let's say the outdrive is in the up position or full up trim. So to give you a better view of what that would look like, again, your outdrive would be up and your yoke shaft would basically look like this. And again, this shaft portion is what feeds into the bell housing through the hull and into the engine coupler. So that will be straight as shown here. And let's say for example, being in the full up trim as we're showing right now, you begin to turn, that is basically what happens. However, this shaft portion is not moving, your entire outdrive is moving. But it's kind of hard to give you that view scenario, having the outdrive stationary on our stand as shown here. And again, back to getting further and further away from the dock into deeper water, you'll begin lowering the outdrive. And as you lower it, again, this shaft stays stationary inside the coupler, and you've got a little bit of play with the gimbal bearing, which is located right here. I'll show you that here shortly. But the outdrive will begin to lower, which basically or ultimately looks like this. And at that point, you're basically in line with the yoke shaft and coupler, and you get to a point where the the outdrive is in the full down position. And again, this entire shaft and U-joint assembly is rotating or spinning at a very fast rate. And I want to give you a quick view of that. All right, DIYers, right now my entire drive shaft is in forward gear. And as I turn this, my propeller is moving. And you can see basically I can move the entire assembly back and forth as I continue to rotate this entire U-joint assembly, basically up, down. So again, engineering really at its finest to allow the inboard engine to spin this large yoke shaft and in return be able to be properly aligned with the crossbar section feeding into the upper unit and then again downstream and moving everything in sync to make your engine produce forward or rearward power with your outdrive really at any given trim setting or trim height. Again, pretty darn cool design. And I'm going to put it in neutral and I'll continue spinning that. Check that out allows you to move the outdrive again left and right to turn up and down as you move that trim and I will set that down 
And the next thing I want to talk about DIY is extremely, extremely important. Do not ever, ever forget this. Whatever you do, don't ever put your outdrive into gear in the trailer position. And real quick, what is trailer position? Take a look at your shift and throttle lever. And depending on the boat, you will have your trim lever and either below it or above it will be a trim button. And when do you push that? Well, when you want to bring the outdrive to the absolute fullest up position or setting. And there's a reason why they call it trailer. Because in most cases, you use that trailer button at the end of the boating day and you've gotten back to the dock and you're no longer in gear. And just prior to turning the engine off, you push and hold that trailer button, which in return raises the outdrive farther up to a higher setting that your trim lever is unable to do. Again, putting your outdrive in the trailer position or the absolute highest or most upward position. And again, some people do that at the end of the boating day just prior to turning the engine off. But in most cases, people do that when they take the boat out of the water and have it on the trailer for transport, whether you're taking it to storage or to and from the marina for service. However, again, back to your little trim lever. That little trim lever serves as a dual purpose. Number one, lowers the outdrive to the absolute lowest setting or position. And as most of us know, we push down and hold that trim lever. And we hear that awesome, unique sound that the outdrive makes as it lowers down into the water. And after a few seconds of holding down on that lever, the outdrive reaches the full down position. And then it makes that full down position sound, which is a little different and more unique than the sound the outdrive is making as it's transitioning in motion and down. And the second purpose of that trim lever is to trim the outdrive up. And again, you can push and hold and hear that unique sound of the outdrive raising. And just like the low setting, that trim lever has its limits. It will only allow that outdrive to come up or trim up to a very specific setting. And then it makes that unique sound that we all have heard when we continue to hold that upward pressure on that lever and the outdrive can't go any higher. It basically kind of bogs down that sound. So again, your trim lever is a multi-purpose or dual purpose lever, which is different than our trailer button. It only serves one single purpose, not a dual purpose. In other words, we can't use that trailer button to lower the outdrive into the water. It's not designed to do that or even capable of doing that. The only purpose it has is to raise that outdrive just a bit higher above the upward trim lever limitation or setting or height, whatever you want to call it, and into the absolute highest setting or position that outdrive could possibly go when secured to your boat. So with all that said, back to what I said a minute ago, do not put the outdrive into gear in the trailer position. And the reason being, DOR is it puts a lot of added stress onto the parts, which you don't want because it basically leads to premature failure or a broken shaft. And I'm here to tell you, we have talked to people that have had this shaft right here snap in two. In addition, when we saw pictures of that, all this up here was badly damaged, not even really noticeable. And the reason being, I'm going to give you a view of this. I'll put it back into forward gear. We are now in forward gear and the propeller is spinning. And let's just say we're in the full up and trailer position. See how all of this binds up like that? And you could cause massive amounts of pressure to this assembly, leading to some serious unfriendly sounds, grinding, popping, snapping, cracking, and finally losing all engine power and forward or reverse motion. And that'd be a bad day. So again, engineering at its finest, but it does have some limitations. And you can use your drive shaft and rotate it as I'm doing now to see where your limitations on your assembly really are. In addition, here is the gimbal bearing that was resting on our workbench. And this slides over the shaft and upstream, basically right like that. And it goes a little further onto the shaft near these rubber O-rings. And scrolling above right now is a video link that talks about the engineering purpose and design of the gimbal bearing and we show it in use, which allows you to see this inner portion of the bearing move, which is pretty neat. Definitely check that out after this video. However, from here, I wanna show you a picture on the computer that will show you our old and original U-joint assembly to give you an idea or view of what happens when the seals give way and water makes it into that area where the U-joints are and slowly begins to destroy everything. And DIYers, here it is. Isn't she pretty? Check that out. Here is what happens when the U-joint bellows fail and allow water into the system where it can then make contact with your inner U-joint, which includes the shaft as well as your crossbars and the entire mount that houses your crossbars and to the inner portion of your upper unit right here. And DIYers, I am here to promise you this. In the event that your U-joint bellows fail and allow the water inside the system where it can then make contact with all of these parts, it will 
will destroy these parts. And in addition, moving inside the upper unit where you have additional bearings and gears, on the outer portion right here is the opposite shaft that looks like this right here and connects to the inner portion or part of the crossbar that you can't see in this photo. And that shaft part that looks like this that's inside here has an internal seal. By not putting it in gear in the trailer position, you will significantly lower any chances or possibilities of all these moving parts that are housed inside your U-joint and the upper unit here from premature failure. And in addition, by not putting it in drive in the trailer position, you will significantly lower the chances or possibility of these fast moving parts here from getting out of alignment and damaging your U-joint bellows, which as I just mentioned, you don't want. Because at that point, if water is getting inside the U-joint bellow and making contact with all of these moving parts, game over sooner or later DIYers, that whole system will fail. And even worse, going back to the inner seal right here, if that seal is damaged, well guess what? All that water that is not only damaging this portion of your U-joint assembly and shaft and crossbars, well unfortunately it's moving inward past that seal into the bearings and gears inside your upper unit and doing nothing but lowering the lifespan of all the internal parts of your outdrive. So again, DIY is extremely, extremely important. Do not run your outdrive in forward or reverse in the trailer position. And one more thing, check this out right here. That is our gimbal bearing. And unfortunately, the boat sat so long that the gimbal bearing seized itself to the yoke shaft. And as we removed the outdrive, well, it was a little more stubborn than it was supposed to be, and we quickly realized why. Again, the gimbal bearing seized itself to the U-joint shaft as shown here. And DIYers, that was a headache because that's not supposed to come out stuck to the U-joint shaft as shown here. But if it does in your case, well, we've got you covered. Scrolling above right now is a link to a video that shows us removing this exact gimbal bearing from this exact U-joint assembly yoke shaft. So definitely check that out. And DIYers, that is it. From here, do us a favor. Below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would mean the world to us. We would really appreciate that. Thanks again for watching.